The meaning of the nativity and the prophecies of his arrival are made public on this, the feast of the baptism of our Lord. And the reality is clear for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. We have the Holy Trinity being revealed as we heard in the gospel lesson. Father says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and the Holy Spirit descends on him, meaning Christ in the form of a dove. The sign that John the baptizer was told by God would happen. So the one that is born in Bethlehem is truly the one who has come to restore our fallen nature, to renew the entire creation by uniting humanity with his divinity within his very self. And as the Son of God enters our world at his birth, now he enters the flowing waters created by him in order to make the waters holy, in order to bring his blessing, to bring his fulfillment upon the world that he created, but the world that was distorted. Distorted because the entire creation was subjected to futility because of the rebellion of our first parents. St. Paul wrote to the Roman church, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the whole creation was subject to futility. And we know that the whole creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the labor pains, waiting for the revealing as we heard of the children of God. The good news of the gospel is that the creator enters creation in order to rebirth creation. I'm always amazed when we teach and preach about the incarnation, about the baptism of the Lord, that Christ Jesus is so humble. He doesn't rec recoil from being born helpless. He doesn't pull away from being handled by human creatures. He doesn't turn away from entering the waters that have been distorted and changed by human sin and death. All things, therefore, all things that are seen, all things that are unseen, all persons are called to participate in the divine glory of God that Christ has brought into this world. I'm amazed over and over again. All of the creation that has been touched by God with us is invited to join and take part in the eternal glory and praise of God, to become one with God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And Christ's baptism reveals that we too are saved along with the rest of creation. For it is through the waters of creation that we may share his life. As St. Paul writes, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So in holy baptism, we receive that garment of light, that garment of light, the garment of glory that was given to our first created parents that was lost. Yes, we shine now, the baptized faithful, shine with that uncreated light, but it's veiled because we still are in a human body. But one day with the new resurrected body, that glory will shine through forever and ever. 
Why is Christ baptized? Many people say that doesn't make sense. Obviously he had sin. No, no. Scripture is quite clear that he is just like we are yet without sin. And matter of fact, John the baptizer knows that this one is different. Why? He says, no, no, no. I should be baptized by you. And then Jesus says that wonderful statement. Let it be so now in order to fulfill all righteousness. What righteousness is being fulfilled? What does that mean? Jesus doesn't need baptism. He doesn't need to repent of his sins because he hasn't sinned and doesn't sin. All righteousness means that he keeps the law. And one of the laws is, is that you need to listen to God's prophets. And we know that John the baptizer was the greatest born of women from the Old Testament times. So Jesus is simply obeying the prophet, obeying God's prophet. And that's the righteousness that is being fulfilled and then John gets it. He understands. He's going to be obedient in all things, even listening to me, the one that is called by the Heavenly Father to speak God's words. Obedience, even in his baptism. And in that action, the incarnate Son of God who hallows and sanctifies our flesh and blood by being born in the first place. He's touched our humanity, our flesh and blood, our souls are altered because he takes that on to himself. And so through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the waters of our holy baptism, we are recreated a new the divine image and likeness of God. And we, we are restored to purity of soul, restored to our mission as given at the first creation. And our vocation is assured because God is with us. And that the created waters that Christ himself created have been changed have been transformed and made holy by him. I remember talking to some young people a few years ago, and I asked a question, and I was quite surprised by the response. And as a matter of fact, I've encountered this response from many adults uh, from that moment forth, and actually before that moment as well. What is the question? Simple question. What has God created? Well, there's many answers that flowed from that question. Uh, earth, sky, stars, water, trees, rocks, animals. Uh, one little guy even said, the ark. Oh, good for you. God created the ark, okay, through, through humans, yes. But I was surprised that more often than not, humans didn't make the list. I think sometimes we are tempted to forget that human beings are also of the created order, that we are dependent on the light of the sun, the fruits of the earth, the air we breathe, the waters of the earth. God created Adam and Eve out of the dust of the earth. We therefore are made of the same stuff that creation is made of. And that's a humbly, humble reminder, I hope, that God sustains our life together with all of creation, all other creatures. But that needn't surprise us, but for some people, it surely does. But sadly, there's a temptation there to forget who we come from. And also at the same time, therefore, who do we worship? 
It's easy to delude ourselves into thinking that the world kind of revolves around us. Some people will even um, quote the scriptures, we're to have dominion over creation. Well, those of us that are married are to have dominion over one another. So what does dominion mean? It means to serve, to serve creation, protect creation. The world doesn't revolve around us, but oftentimes we see the limitations and the problems that are experienced by others and indeed the whole creation somehow doesn't or at least shouldn't apply to us. But then we get snapped out of that when we are faced with the death of a loved one, sickness, unemployment, a broken relationship, or even horribly inclement weather that keeps us from that which we would like to do. We find out very quickly, yes, we are in creation. We don't rule over creation. Over the good news of the feast of the baptism of the Lord is that these challenges that we face every day do not separate us from God and God's love. They don't remove us from his blessed creation and destroy our ability to share in his eternal life. Jesus entered fully into the creation known to us. He made holy every dimension of our life. What his life hasn't touched has not become holy and he has touched every part of our life. Like us except for sin. Every dimension of life, from the pains of birth to the pains of growing, the pains of going through puberty, sickness, whatever, suffering, injustice, he suffered it all. He touched creation. He touched humanity. And no part of creation, no dimension of our existence can separate us from his presence, from his blessings, from his steadfast eternal love. He has even conquered death on our behalf. But for us to receive and to live this good news requires a kind of death on our part as well. We must die to the delusion that we're somehow not part of creation or we stand over and above creation. That we're somehow better than. Yes, we're the pinnacle of God's creation. But still, we are of God's creation. Meaning, in other words, we need to die to the delusion that we are God. That we don't need God, or at least we need a God on our terms, not on God's terms. We must die to the idolatry of self that leads us to worship false idols, pride, materialism, lust, envy, greed, anger, indifference. The same selfish idolatry that leads us to pollute ourselves, others, and our natural resources, as if they belong to us and not ultimately to God. We must die to our tendency to be a curse and not a blessing to the rest of God's good creation, including our fellow human beings and the natural world. Sadly, we miss the mark, recognizing the sacredness of creation we miss the mark of recognizing the sacredness of others, and we miss the mark of recognizing the sacredness of our very self, body and soul. 
And instead of offering blessings to God, we so often desire to be just left alone. Just leave me alone. Let me go on with life on my own terms. I'm doing okay. I don't need you right now, God. I really don't. I'm doing okay. What we're actually asking for and saying that is a pass of being inconvenienced. Inconvenienced by meeting the needs of the poor and the lonely. We're asking for a pass from the inconvenience of forgiving those that have offended us and loving even our enemies. We're asking for a pass being inconvenienced by taking the time to heal and to care for all of creation. That we are reminded at the baptism of the Lord that life on our own terms it just simply isn't life. Something else. It's instead of Christ, anti Christ. For when we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his death. We die with Christ to sin and corruption, and we will rise with him in newness of life again and again in this age until that day, that glorious day when he returns in glory and honor and power to judge both the living and the dead. We die with Christ now to sin and corruption so that we will rise in that day. And the love that God loves all with will be a blessing, will be paradise forever and ever. We will be clothed with his garment of light, with new resurrection bodies that will be open to the eternal glory and light and love of God. And we will participate fully in his victory. What we will encounter will not just be a continuation of what we have now, only supercharged or a little bit better. <coughs> Things that have been become comfortable and familiar to us. No, life in Christ requires a decisive break from the fallenness that has become normal to us. St. John was the last Old Testament prophet and a fiery preacher who boldly called people to repent, to prepare the way of the Lord in their lives by making his path straight, meaning by walking the path of God, the way of God, the truth of God, who came in person and like the other prophets, he wasn't concerned about pleasing people, but he spoke the truth in love, in no uncertain terms, a calling that God's people have always been called to, meaning to be ready for the Messiah, human hearts must turn to and start living towards and pleasing God by bringing God's love, healing, and wholeness and redemption to every facet of creation. To be baptized into Christ is to die from all that separates us from God. To be baptized into Christ is to share in the blessings that our Lord has brought to the entire creation. To be baptized in Christ is to see the creation as holy, including ourselves and others, and our environment. To be baptized into Christ is participating in the transformation and the healing for the kingdom of God. Every dimension of our lives must become an epiphany, a showing forth, a manifestation, an incarnation, an embodiment of the reality of God's salvation which is God's healing, wholeness, and victory. We are to offer every aspect of our life, every bit of the world which we come in contact with to the Lord as a sacrament, as an outward and visible sign 
of that which is going on inside of us by the grace and glory and love and mercy of God. For nothing, no one is outside the scope of his love and his care. Nothing, no one is separate from his will for a renewed heaven and a renewed earth and the renewed human soul by way of the Holy Spirit. He wants the entire creation, yes, the whole universe, to shine brightly with the glory of his divinity, including you and me. But that's up to you. That's up to me. That's up to others. But remember this, if you remember nothing else, of the baptism of our Lord stepping in to the waters of creation that he created, the waters which are the life of the world, have been changed. I'm always impressed, for it is amazingly awesome what a little water can do when blessed by the Creator and the Redeemer of all. Amen. Thank you.